We're back with Module 4, CVP Analysis, M4-3, Cost, Volume, Profit, Relationship, and Graph. Let's start by reading the question. Orange Inc. manufactures a product which they sell to wholesalers and retailers. They have the following information for 2019. You'll notice that this is the exact same information we had for a previous video. I told you then that we were going to use Orange Inc. for the whole series of CVP analysis videos. Let's look at the required. What is the cost function for this product? Remember that costs behave in different ways, and understanding cost behavior can help businesses to predict how changes in sales volume will change operating income, which is why knowing the cost function, what it costs the business to produce the product at different sales volumes, is critical to predicting future costs. The costs are made up of both variable and fixed costs. It's important to remember that within the relevant range, fixed costs will not change as sales volume increases. At the same time within the relevant range, variable costs per unit will remain constant, the same. If either of these things are confusing, please go back and watch my videos on fixed, variable, and mixed costs, and you'll see why this is true. To develop the cost function, we need to know the variable cost per unit, and we obtain that from this chart. Direct materials are a variable cost. Direct labor, variable cost. Variable overhead, production, is a variable cost. Total fixed, fixed costs. And variable selling and admin, variable cost. And then total fixed selling and admin non-production is a fixed cost. In order to calculate the variable cost per unit, we need to add all of the variable costs together. The sum of all these circled numbers, 2750. For every single unit produced, it's going to cost us $27.50 in variable costs. We also need to know the fixed costs in total. The sum of the boxes is equal to 55,500. We also know this from the contribution margin income statement that we did in a previous video. Now we have the information to develop the cost function. Total costs are always equal to total fixed costs plus variable costs per unit times the sales volume. If we want to calculate a total cost function, we don't put the sales volume in. We know it's 3000 for the actual level of sales for 2019, but we want to use a cost function to predict the future, so we don't put in a sales volume. We can now complete this by using the numbers we calculated. Regardless of the sales volume, we can use this formula to calculate total costs within the relevant range. To double check, we can calculate it using 3,000 units. If you look back at the contribution margin income statement, you will see that total variable costs are equal to 82,500 and total fixed costs are equal to 55,500. We now know that the cost function works. Let's move on to the next question. What is the revenue function for this product? The revenue function tells businesses what the total sales revenue will be at any level of activity or sales volume. It's pretty easy to calculate. Total revenue is equal to sales price per unit times sales volume. A short form would be, let's see if it works at a sales volume of 3,000 units. If you look back at the contribution margin income statement, you would see that sales revenue is equal to 150,000. Can we now combine these two functions to calculate total operating income? Remember that operating income is equal to total revenue minus total costs. Well, we know that total revenue is equal to selling price per unit times sales volume. Total cost is equal to fixed costs plus variable costs per unit times sales volume. Well, in that case, selling price times sales volume minus variable costs per unit times sales volume minus fixed costs is equal to operating income. We've now combined the two formulas in order to produce operating income formula. Let's put in 3000 to see if it works. It should equal the operating income on the contribution margin income statement that we did in our last video. And what does this equal? This exactly matches the contribution margin income statement that we created in our previous video. We now know that this formula works. It should be highlighted that this function will work at any level of activity as long as that level of activity is within the relevant range. We'll continue with this question in the next video.